What's up everybody, it's VK here. So, it's our thousandth video and for this one we're going to be telling the story. The big story of how I got addicted to drugs and how I got off of them. Uh, Southwind brought this idea up in the comment section, so thank you for that Southwind. I appreciate you man, that was a really good idea. Um, I would like to start the video up by giving thanks to God and thanks to Jesus for reviving my life and giving me an opportunity to do what I do on here with you guys and to make my music and to just actually be here after everything that I put myself through and that I went through in life. It's really, it's the biggest blessing possible to even just still be alive and still be able to like function properly as a human and have no like crazy lasting life altering effects from it at the end of the day afterwards i've recovered from everything very well even on a physical level so i'm blessed for that so i would like to give thanks to god first and foremost i would like to thank southwind for being here and supporting the channel i would like to give thanks to creek squad you guys have been here since years ago I started making reaction videos like years ago when I was still drinking and stuff. I did it for a few months, maybe like half a year or something like that. And you guys showed up and you were awesome for that too. Thank you to Up Church. He's shown support on the channel and he said some really kind things and supportive things. So thank you to Up Church. All of that has been really encouraging when it comes to making my own music and doing the reaction videos and just running a channel in general. Having that kind of support and that kind of inspiration is very, very much so a blessing. And I don't take that for granted for a second. I appreciate the fuck out of all of you guys. So thank you for that. All my Aussie fans, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the awesome music you've introduced me to. It's been nothing, like I said, but a blessing than to get on here and get to know you guys. And just let you guys get to know me a little bit. Outside of what I do with music and stuff like that, I think it's important to have that connection with people even outside of the art that you might make and stuff like that. It's important to just connect with people and talk to them and get on here. It's an opportunity to do that. So that's why I get on here and do this stuff for you guys. And I hope that I can inspire and influence some of you guys to also make good changes in your own lives through my own experiences. So I don't have a plan for this at all i guess the best way to do it is to just tell the story in its raw form and whatever gets told gets told i'm gonna omit names from any stories that might get told for obvious reasons so you ain't gonna hear no name drops or nothing inside of this video this is just gonna be telling the basis of how things were and how it went how we got there and how we got out of it so my emotion, well, my drug problem stemmed from emotional issues, but that all started when I was really young, um, as a young child before I was even in the double digits of age. I was a witness to domestic violence and toxic situations and stuff like that, as were other people in my family. My siblings were subjected to that sort of stuff as well, and we all have our own ways of coping with that. Mine obviously turned into drugs and alcohol for my own self. Other people that were around it had their own ways of coping. And that's really all there is to that is we all had our own way of managing our way through that in whatever circumstance we found ourselves in in those toxic environments. For me personally, I turned to drugs and alcohol. And music became my outlet at the same time. But... Throughout my younger years, it was like I had a striking interest in music, and this was before I ever did drugs or anything like that, because I didn't start using anything until I was like 13 or 14 years old. It was the first time I like took pills or drank and stuff like that for the most part. There were times like <clears throat> when I was younger, I might have had like a little sip of beer, or, like a shot or something like that, that I snuck or whatever as a child just because it was around but it was never like something that I wanted to do all the time until I got into my older like high school kind of years so throughout like I'd say the period of 
time from like nine years old to like 13 is when that problem started to manifest itself but I hadn't started taking things yet whenever I was nine my family had like a little separation kind of thing go on where my mom moved out of state and it was confusing for everybody it was really confusing for me I felt a type of way about it at that age and it was a little bit fucked up inside of my head because of abandonment things and stuff like that and already feeling like screwed up from witnessing domestic violence and that sort of shit as a kid it kind of fucked with my head a lot even at that young age um people in my family a lot of people in my family struggled with alcoholism i had my first loss to alcoholism when i, I think i was only like seven or eight years old i had an uncle that was really awesome and we used to go visit him and we would sit there and like roll the homemade cigarettes that had like the old fashioned roller that you actually had to like roll. It wasn't like the pool rollers that people use nowadays or the electric rollers. It was like one of those old fashioned ones. And I used to sit there and roll cigarettes with him and play with toys. And he would just have a good time with me and shit. He was like, like one of my favorite people, but he died from alcoholism whenever I was just a young child. So I never really got a chance to properly get to know him due to that and that affected me as a kid um my dad was an alcoholic but he's recover in recovery now he's coming up on his own 21 years so that is one person that i will shout out my dad always encouraged me to stop drinking and stop destroying myself and there were times that he had to like shove me away like i can't even lie he, he would just be like go handle yourself like figure it out and that's what he eventually had to say to me and he just kind of had to let it be what it was as painful as that was for him and i talked to him yesterday for father's day or the day before yesterday for father's day and we caught up and everything it was a good time he's doing good i'm doing good we had a nice conversation talked about recovery and talked about music and stuff my dad's a musician too so that's really where I get it from, and my stepdad was a musician as well, a country singer, and he played in the church band, and I did that with him as well. I played in the church band on drums when I was like 13, that was my first instrument, and I did that for a little while, and then I got into guitar, I started diddling with it a little bit whenever I was like probably 12 or 13, I, I like just fiddling around with it and shit like that. But I didn't get serious into guitar until about 14 or 15. I started taking it serious and actually wanting to learn how to play proper chord structures and songs and full songs and stuff like that. So that's around the time that I started like doing drugs and stuff was 14-ish, I would say. Um, when I was 13, I had a bad self-harm problem. I had to go to the mental institution, got medicated got off the medications because I moved back in with my dad from where I was. I stayed with my mom for a while and was that wasn't a very nice environment because of the abusive situation and stuff like that. So that was tough to get through and I just moved back in with my dad eventually and he always took care of me. So I don't have any complaints whenever it comes to that. He just let me learn how to make my music and encouraged me to be my own person and like be my own kind of artist like don't try too hard to be like somebody else like it's good to take inspiration but like always be yourself and have like your own message of stuff that you want to say to the world my dad always encouraged that a lot and I appreciate the hell out of him for that a whole lot I really appreciate that so the self-harm stuff happened moved in with dad Went to school for a year in my hometown, which is Butler, Pennsylvania. For those of you that don't know, the home of the Jeep, Butler, Pennsylvania is where I was born. That's where I primarily spent most of my high school time was there, with just some visits to Florida in between and stuff like that. Later on in life is when I really spent a lot of time in Florida and then came to Tennessee and everything like that. So that's later on down the road. But when I was in Pennsylvania in high school, uh, that city just has a way of fucking corrupting people, man, especially the young youth, because there's nothing to go do. It's just 
you hang out with each other and you rage and you run down the streets and act wild and find new places to explore and a lot of people get into drugs and alcohol and that's just is what it is so that's really where it all started was just that kind of influence i started smoking and then that turned into curiosities i was into a lot of like 60s and 70s kind of culture and music and shit so i was intrigued by psychedelics and shit so i started messing around with that that didn't really mess me up bad i never had a problem with those kinds of things i just experimented a fuck ton with them really i had a massive brain expansion going on before i even turned 18 years old from that stuff i was like talking about ways to change the world and society in high school and people weren't even thinking about that back then they were like still stuck in the status quo and i was just kind of that weird kid that did a lot of drugs basically <laughs> that played guitar but people like people weren't mean to me for the most part like <clears throat> I got bullied in my younger years specifically, and then as I grew older, I kind of like settled into being more chill with every kind of person. It didn't really matter what they were. Like, if you just weren't a dick to me, I wouldn't be a dick to you. So I just did a lot of pills and a lot of drugs and stuff throughout high school. That was really rough. There were a lot of times, uh, places I shouldn't have been. Like, I spent a lot of time in trap house kind of areas. A lot of time hanging out with very questionable people that were definitely affiliated with groups you shouldn't want to put yourself around. That sort of stuff. Put myself in dangerous, reckless situations as a young kid that just really made me feel like a lot more grown up mentally than the average person that ain't out running around doing that kind of stuff is going to feel like the because at 15 years old was the first time somebody ever held a gun to my head and told me not to fuck up with them. So that's like the environment that I put myself in at that age. And it's kind of like whenever you experience that so young, you just grow up really quick. And I think that that feeling of being grown and like being a young kid hanging around fucking grown adults that were like 20, 30 years old and stuff like that that would just sell you drugs or give you drugs sometimes just so you could try them or whatever or party with them because they were bored and you were there you know those kind of circumstances was a lot of my using back in those days and then I started getting more into pills as I was closing in on probably like 16 years old is when the pill problem began and that escalated later on into my 20s as well i had a few experiences with almost overdosing and being found on floors and barely breathing and having to be slapped awake and shit like that definitely many times that i feel i probably should not have survived what i had put myself through and i'm very lucky to still be here after going through all of those things and putting myself through all of those things so it's really a blessing to still be here after all of that that's the tip of the iceberg whenever it comes to like the amount of stories that i have a shit with alcohol i was always an alcoholic you can ask anyone that knew me back in high school if there was alcohol involved i was drinking all of it and i was getting shit faced 15 years old didn't care i would go spend the night at uh, i had a buddy who would go spend the night at his house and his mom would leave for the weekend and there would just be a 30 pack of milwaukee's best sitting in the fridge and I would drink damn near all of it and just make sure I left her a few for when she got home because she didn't care. She was going out to party and probably have drinks somewhere else anyhow. So she didn't care that the beer in the fridge got drank. I'd usually leave a few bucks on the table, like 10 bucks or whatever, just as a courtesy thing because I appreciated her letting me drink all of her booze whenever she wasn't home. So I was always had a problem with alcohol. If it was around, I was overindulging in it. And then I, like, around 17 years old, I had extreme anxiety begin and thought I was dying a few times. I smoked weed 
and had like really severe panic attacks and had to go to the hospital because I thought I was having a heart attack. They were like, no, nah, you're just stoned, dude. Like literally stop smoking so fucking much. Your b body ain't handling it well right now, apparently. So that's all we could tell you about that. So that happened. And that's whenever I started drinking more is because smoking was giving me anxiety, but alcohol didn't. So I ended up moving to Florida when I'm 18. I had dropped out of high school. My dad was pissed as hell at me for dropping out of high school. And that's understandable. I understand. It's good that he cared. I appreciate that he cared and wanted the best for me when it came to my education and everything. So yeah, I... I failed at that part of life. I did not graduate from high school. I dropped out. I moved to Florida at 18 years old. Mom was going through a divorce. And it was just kind of like I had friends around and we partied all the time while I was looking for a job and trying to settle in there. Just turned into a major alcoholic that drank every single fucking day because I wasn't really working at the time. And everybody would just come over with bottles and hang out and stuff and... That was really that. I was just drunk for six months straight. Almost died once because I had alcohol poisoning. I had a buddy that sat in the bathroom with me while I like forced it all out of my stomach in the shower. It was fucking brutal. That was at 18 years old. And I didn't think I was going to survive that night. I did not think I was going to make it. I had a hangover that lasted a whole week and was scared to any alcohol at all like I was terrified of it so I went through like not terrible withdrawals because it wasn't that bad of a problem at the time but I went through like withdrawals and a really super bad week-long hangover then I started drinking again and then I eventually after a few months I moved back to Pennsylvania again and that's where I started making folk punk music and shit and I started making folk punk because a lot of it, the subject matter was like addiction and like crazy issues in society. And that's the kind of bag that I was sitting in with myself in my real life. So I was like, oh, I can sing some songs about boozing and drugging. And that's exactly what happened. But there was also a lot of like societal and like political tie-ins to the songs as well. And it was literally all just really an alcohol fueled section of my career that was super punk rock played a lot of house shows played shows in the underground at the building the art center and on main street and butler played a lot of shows in the basement down there played house shows for friends just met a lot of awesome people had a lot of good times and then the drinking just got out of control I was in a relationship for a while at the time. It got fucked up due to my drinking and due to a lot of stupid shit I did while I was drinking. No hard feelings there. We were always there for each other even afterwards. And even if we haven't talked at all, I still would like that person to know if they happen to see this video that I'm glad that they're doing well in life. And I hope that they continue to do well in life because... A lot of that shit was definitely my fault whenever it came to that specific circumstance. And I'm not afraid to admit that everybody makes mistakes. So it is what it is. You fuck up some things and you learn lessons from it. So my drinking caused me to like lose. I had to start another part because that one got cut off. My storage was low, but that's okay. We'll do this in as many parts as we have to for me to get done rambling about this to you guys. So... Yeah, I lost a relationship and things in life were just wild. I was drinking heavily and then I ended up actually getting clean for like three months or so it was. I know I did like 92 or 94 AA meetings in like 90 days because a girl that I knew set me up with her buddy that was helping people out and he was willing to drive me to meetings with him and he went every day all the time. So I just started going with him. And that happened for a little while. That was pretty decent for that period of time. But then I ended up moving to Florida. I wanted to go to WrestleMania and shit. And I just decided to move down there again while I was going to WrestleMania. And 
I relapsed that time the second I got on the train. I just started drinking. I was in like full party mode and I don't know. My brain just hit the fuck it switch and then I barely made it out of it that time, which is this time that we're in sobriety from now that it lasted from this relapse until up until this period of sobriety now, which is about to be 18 months of no alcohol. So that's the longest I've ever gone since I was like 15 years old. So that's a heavy accomplishment for me. But yeah, I moved back down to Florida. I was staying in a little city called Astor. It's a really small town, nothing to do. It's nothing but trailers and then a, like the rich people area. And that's the whole city. There's really nothing else. There's like a dollar store and a bar and a restaurant. And that's about it. So like... There was not shit to do there. I would go sit on the computer and watch WWE and shit because we didn't even have Wi-Fi and stuff. Like, we were were fucking kicking it. Let me tell you, all there was was alcohol and swimming, going to the swim hole, jumping out of the tree into the one, like, five to five foot section that you could land in safely. It was like your feet would touch the bottom and you pop back up out of this little hole. But if you didn't land there, you were breaking your legs. So take your chances. That's the way it was. And that's just what we did all the time there. I was go to the different swim holes and everything like that and just hang out and drink and everything. And I was still working on music and everything like that. And then I stayed with a buddy for a little while too. And that was basically that. I just had a lot of wild times still drinking my ass off. I I rode a bike like fucking 36 miles (laughs) from county to county to get to my buddy's house at one point. It it was a wild time in my life. I, I had a wild time down there. I would always be walking freaking 10 miles to the store because I couldn't get a ride anywhere. And I wanted alcohol and where the alcohol was, was that far away the alcohol that I wanted at least, right? (laughs) So, yeah, I was kicking it like crazy back then, fucking holes in the shoes all the time because I just fucking walked and biked every single place that I went back in those days. So I ended up moving back up to Pennsylvania and just trying to work out what I want to do with music and everything like that. And at that point, family had moved to Tennessee with some of their family and I was like screw it I've always wanted to go and like see what Tennessee is like I'm gonna fucking go down there and kick it with them for a little bit I'm still drinking and having troubles with myself throughout all of this mind you all of this I'm moving a bunch of times throughout my life to all kinds of different places like on the east coast so it's like I've seen a lot of the world. I've met a lot of interesting people. I, At this point in my life, I'm like, the only thing you haven't done that you want to do is, like, get people to know your music and, like, actually inspire the world a bit. Like, you've seen a lot and you've met a lot of people and you've experienced a lot of life and you haven't, like, sold yourself short So it's like I've never felt sold short because I had so much experience from the wild times that I was having inside of my life. But I felt sold short on like the music and stuff like that. So I wanted to like try to focus in more on that. And I thought Tennessee would probably be a good place to do that considering that so much amazing music comes from here. I felt like there'd probably be a lot to learn from the music here, and from the people here, and everything like that, so I was like, let's go live there for a little bit, and see what it's all about, and then that's around the time that I started deciding that I wanted to turn my more rap style lyrics into actual songs, and finding beats for them, and shit like that, and actually trying to make hip-hop songs, and rap songs, and it was, it was wildly terrible at first like there's a difference between like rapping along to people that you know and that you listen to and like actually composing your own raps for a beat it's it's a lot more complicated than you might think whenever you're first trying to figure it out 
from translation to just writing it down and then like actually making it fit perfectly on a beat and everything there's a lot of a learning curve there when it comes to that transference and I had just been writing lyrics that were like really poetic rap style lyrics but not putting them to beats so I had to kind of mold my writing a little bit to be more balanced inside of the pocket of beats and shit like that that was something that I had to learn to do so I started doing the hip-hop thing and then moved back to Pennsylvania and it was just like the friend group that I started hanging out with were some kids that I knew since we were real young in high school and everything the same people that I had known my whole life like everybody was wanting to rap and wanting to make music so we just decided to make a studio in my buddy's basement and everybody would come over and record and we'd help each other out give each other advice on what we think would sound good or rapping and stuff like that there's a lot of talented artists in that area that i'm from like i said it's butler pennsylvania and there's a lot of talented artists in that area it's right outside of pittsburgh so it's kind of like a hot spot for that kind of music and a lot of music actually just any kind of music every single genre in that area has a representation because there's just so many talented musicians inside of that scene so we're all just hanging out trying to like write our best raps and come up with our best music I'm like trying to figure out what I want to write about when it comes to hip hop because I didn't want to like write the typical mainstream drugs and bitches and all of that kind of stuff that you hear on the typical radio songs and trending songs and shit like that I didn't want to be inside of that kind of typical bag but that's like the kind of lifestyle I was living at the time was heavy on drugs and heavy on booze and so it was like weird to try to find a disconnect because I actually had to dial myself back on bluntness to not talk about the drugs and stuff so much. So it just turned into me trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it and still talking about the drugs while also mentioning some important issues to me at the same time. And it it was a weird beginning because of where I was in my life and I kind of like settled more into like what I want to talk about with my lyricism and stuff nowadays versus back then I was just trying to figure it all out while being a wreck and I'm grateful that I pulled myself out of that because I don't think that I ever would have started to come up with more like important kind of topics and stuff that I like to talk about and also the videos for the reactions and the topics we discuss in those as well because I, like I said I was trying to do reactions years ago and I had a lot of fun doing them even though I was still drinking and shit it was just a, a lot of wild energy going on in those videos if you go back and look at the older videos there's a lot of wild energy going on in some of them because I was just drunk or on pills or whatever so yeah I mean it just kind of boiled down to a lot of people around me being really worried and uh, I mean it got to a point where I started to get worried too because I was falling out a lot and just fucking having trouble maintaining proper jobs and living properly and everything like that so at some point I decided I wanted to move back to Tennessee and have a more fresh perspective on everything and work on my music and everything here. And I stayed addicted to alcohol for like my first three, two-ish, two and a half to three-ish years of being here. It would have been probably about two and a half years, I would say. Yeah, so I just kind of did my thing and was drinking really badly and it almost took me out I had a lot of hospital trips a lot of like three to five day stays at the hospital for like low nutrients and potassium deficiency and seizures and everything you could imagine going wrong like at one point I had a fuck my blood count was so fucking bad that I had like the it, it wasn't lymphoma itself but it was 
one of the related diseases that could lead to lymphoma was starting to form inside of my blood and everything like that from the counts. They were so high, they were concerned that that could happen to me. So they're like, your liver's fucked. (laughs) Your blood's fucked. (laughs) Everything is fucked. They were like, if you don't stop drinking, you're going to be dead in probably less than a year. And I went home and I sat with that for a couple days. I looked into some places for rehab. I called. They told me they would get a hold of me whenever they had a place to go. They got a hold of me a couple days later. I went to rehab. I met some amazing people there. I even met somebody that was from the area that I'm from. And it was really neat to like actually meet somebody from the same area. And We talked a little bit afterwards and everything too. I don't know exactly what they're up to now. I hope that that person is doing well. But yeah, I mean, it was just, it it was really tough. Like, because I came home. I came home after rehab and had to stay for like two or three days before I could get into a halfway house. So I had that going on. And I had a a couple days to fucking think with like, no professional help or anything around me and I just kind of spent that time reflecting on life and enjoying some music and just trying to settle into my first week of sobriety and then I went to the halfway house for about a month maybe a little over a month and decided that I wanted to come back home and just go back to work and focus on doing my music and figuring out what it is that I wanted to do with my life after not drinking and it took me a little while to settle into it going back to work and just being sober and dealing with the regular stresses of life and everything like that without the alcohol which honestly it actually is easier because you're not like trying to withdraw and go into like withdrawals during times when you're not drinking and shit like that and the times that you can't drink and shit like that you're not dealing with the withdrawals anymore and it actually becomes less stressful because now you don't feel like you're gonna fall out of your fucking skin or like claw it off all the time right so it's kind of like it's better at the end of the day it's better whenever you settle into it at the end of the day and for me i just am really grateful that I was able to do that and that now I'm here doing this with you guys after a few months I decided to get back on YouTube and just make a few videos and see what people were up to see what was going on with the music scenes and everything like that and then a bunch of Australians showed up and Creek Squad showed back up and we've been reacting to awesome Australian music and up church and everything in between that we find comedy just any kind of music at all i've been making my own music and it's been real chill it's been super chill to hang out with you guys and i'm super grateful i'm very grateful so that's a basic rundown there are so many crazy stories that would take up the entirety of where i've been talking with one story so maybe i'll tell you guys some of those stories at some point too If I can think of some of them that I might want to share on here that aren't, like, too crazy, right? Because a lot of them are just fucking crazy and don't need to be told necessarily. So there's that always whenever it comes to addiction. Crazy times and crazy shit that you see whenever you're in that addicted life around certain types of people. So I want to leave you guys with this piece of scripture I found that I think is really important because like I said, my inspiration from the 60s and 70s and wanting to be a lot like that culture kind of had me idolizing a certain kind of lifestyle and shit like that back in my younger years. So I found this Bible verse right here that I want to read to you guys. This is 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 14. It's No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry.
saying, be yourself, live inside of your purpose, get close to God, have faith that life will be beautiful, and do the work that helps other people out in the world as well. That's what I take from that verse, mostly. And that's really what I take from that verse whenever I read it, is to have that faith in God. Don't idolize worldly things like materialism and getting super big and famous and having all of these girls or women or stuffing yourself full of drugs and alcohol. Don't idolize that kind of stuff. Have a good relationship with God. Have a good relationship with spirit. Get close to Jesus. And if that's not your thing, at least just don't do things that are harmful to your life and harmful to other people around you because at the end of the day, it's better on the other side and you can have a much better life whenever you're coherent and you can actually chase your dreams and impact people in a meaningful way. It's much better on that side of things. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this little bit of story time that I had inside of this. It's just a little piece of it and there are plenty more stories that I can tell but this is just the rundown of how it basically happened for me the time frame and all of the different periods and places that it happened in so I appreciate you guys I appreciate you guys reaching out and helping each other out in the comments Southwind thank you for your comment saying that I should do this. It's a really good idea, man. I truly appreciate your support. It's awesome to have you here on the channel. I love watching your stuff as well. You're super inspirational. Thank you to Creek Squad. Thank you to Up Church. Thank you to God. Thank you to Jesus. Thank you to everybody that believed in me after I got clean. Everybody that didn't believe in me, I'm right here. And I still love you guys so we're gonna get out of here i love you guys so much thank you for all the support i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was insightful and i hope it inspired you to change your own life i love you so much have a beautiful blessed night thank you for everything peace